you take some of the symbology and stories from um, Ojibwe mythology and storytelling and, you know, experience, and you kind of reinterpret those a little bit to your own experience. I would say that my work um, stems from my upbringing mm -hmm. as uh, a native uh, who was raised in an urban environment yeah. um, from Red Lake. Okay. Uh, Red Lake Band of Ojibwe's, mm -hmm. but I was raised in the Twin Cities okay. in a very urban setting. So um, there's been this constant mix of um, identity and discovery mm -hmm. and uh, old world meets new. Uh, so I think as, you know, like I progress as an artist, mm -hmm. one thing I've always been interested in is storytelling. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I took a little bit of storytelling in college um, yeah. and throughout my career I've always been into filmmaking sure so I kind of tell stories uh, through my paintings mm -hmm. through films through animation I've been exposed to a lot of stories that come from the Anishinaabe culture sure and they're uh, very creative and rich and some of them are so far gone that I, I, I have no idea how somebody made that up um, I like to make these stories live and evolve right. and uh, start to see them through my lens. And my lens is, um, you know, I, I take to songwriters like Tom Waits and mm -hmm. uh, filmmakers like David Lynch right. and Terry Gilliam. So I like to take stuff that may or may not be a little bit wholesome mm -hmm. and run it through, <laughs> you know, sort of the urban filter and see what I can make of it that, you know, kind of brings it to my my liking. A lot of those Anishinaabe stories aren't exactly uh, kid-friendly, right. I would say, by today's standards of kid-friendliness, right. you know. There there are some adult themes in there. Right. Like the, uh, I just read the uh, biography of a character named Nana Buju, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of it is kind of funny, a lot of it is sort of innocent. But there's some things in there that have very adult <laughs> themes too. Right. I was wondering too, so in a lot of your paintings you have a very strong color palette and it tends to repeat. What do some of those colors mean to you or why do you, why is it that that's the color palette that you draw from do you think? I think I go in phases where mm -hmm. uh, something just appeals to me the most at mm -hmm. the time until I get bored with it. I think it was a couple of years ago I started painting with red yeah. and uh, trying to explore red and what I think about uh, when I think about the different kinds of red that are available mm -hmm. when you mix your palette is I think about things like you know red Corvettes, right. lipstick, okay. nail polish, okay. you know uh, things that people are just you know like why do they paint these things this color you know because right. they're kind of sexy. Right. So uh, for me that uh, is I think something that really draws me to this color and there's yeah. also a little bit of eerie, or not eerie, but like urban, almost neon mm -hmm. kind of mystery to it. Sure, so, yeah. Uh, for me, those are all things that work. So with the films and with the painting, it sounds like they kind of, like maybe they kind of inform one another and kind of... Is that... Yeah, great question. <laughs> uh, that's exactly how I would phrase it. Is, okay. uh, they speak to each other. One okay. informs the other and it's constantly... Uh, a balance of painting versus uh, my animations, filmmaking. Yeah. Um, this year I had the opportunity to uh, merge the two. Yeah. Um, I think it was about a year and a half ago I made a film called Walk in Dreams where mm -hmm. I took a bunch of my paintings okay. and I put them into an animation. Okay. So it was just like this long, intuitive, sort of surreal uh, oh, wow. uh, scape of paintings that just kind of exist over like an ambient soundscape. Mm -hmm. 